Is your, is your system muted or what is he that? I am muted. We're on muted here. So the mic should be working. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us. Today is Tuesday, September 15th. It is 1.32, we're a couple minutes late, but that's the way it works uh, here at City Hall. And thank you everybody for showing up or tuning in on the webinar. Uh, I am your council liaison, Steve Blair, and we are the Mayor's Commission on Water and Sewer Connections in the area. So. If we could, Carrie, could we do a roll call? Councilman Blair? Here. Uh, Jane Orr? Here. Mark Nitowski? Here. Millie Owens? Here. Sherry Hanna? Here. Sandy Griffiths? Yes. So we have two by Zoom. Um, Jim Hazelbaker and Michael Breen. When they come in, I will check them off. Okay, um, first business detail is item C, approval of the minutes. Did anybody read the minutes? Yeah. Read them. Anybody have any changes to the minutes? If not, can I hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Okay, uh, motion has been made and seconded. Just remain quiet if you agree with it. If you have an objection, please state so now. Okay, the minutes are approved, Carrie. Today we have a rather mm, interesting topic and something that people ask about most often, which is what the financial impacts are going to be on such a endeavor. So with staff through Mark, through um, Public Works and everybody, we have put together several things to be considered. So at this point, I'll turn over to Mark Woodfill, our financial director and guru, to talk a little bit about sewer connections and the cost. Good morning, Mark, or afternoon. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, and today uh, I put copies of the slides in front of you. It's a very brief presentation because the, really the point here is to kind of lay it out for you and then talk about different options or what the committee thinks of different options. So I didn't want to kill you with 20 pages of PowerPoints. So we actually only have three relevant pages. Uh, so I'll go through those and then the last page is even some different scenarios I just threw out there to start the conversation and we can go from there. Get my computer here to work. So the first thing I wanted to cover was sewer connection costs and the typical system and how we've done it in the city for the last 150 years since I've been here. Um, Generally, the regional mains, the wastewater treatment plants, they're paid for by the wastewater fund, which is an enterprise fund. It's done through rates and through um, impact fees. We also use debt service, but debt service isn't a source, it's a financing source. You gotta repay debt. So those are done that way. Uh, neighborhood mains are generally done by the developer when they subdivide the land, and those costs are included on the lot price when people buy a lot. So that's a little different, obviously, in an area that's been developed that is unsewered than a brand new area. But if you moved into Paisley or you moved into Young Pie Hills, when the subdivision was built, the lines were put in, the regional, the not regional, the neighborhood lines were put in, and that was included on your lot price. Um, then um, when uh, in the past, when sewered areas have come in, that cost has been put on to have special assessments. And that's the way we've done unsewered areas up through the 80s into the 90s. And then in the 90s, it started to be an issue as we looked at North Prescott and a few others that were more significant. Now the home connection cost uh, is also, of course, a cost is paid by the owner. Uh, as the house is built, the, the uh, contractor will put that in. In an unsewered area, there's a little more cost because you're trying to connect where a sewer comes out of a house to where the sewer main might be now, as opposed to a new construction where you would build a house sewer system to automatically feed into that. Uh, we talk a lot in vague numbers and stuff, and I know that's frustrating, so I decided to put some numbers to this, as long as you promise not to hold me. <laughs> um, just talking, looking at the fees, you have an impact fee, which is currently 3000 
$20 for a residential 5 8 inch meter. There's a sewer tap and a right-of-way permit, which are other fees associated with it. And then there's going to be the cost to somebody to replace the line out of your house from the septic system to the new sewer main, as well as the cost of abandoning the old system. Those costs are extremely variable. I talked to a contractor and came up with some rough ideas. If it's a simple solution, we're looking at a total of about $7,500 per house. Obviously, if, if your sewer feeds out the back and the sewer mains in the front and you're gonna to have to replumb your house to make it flow the other way, cost could be significantly more. So I did include that as a footnote. It would be very variable. And then of course, as we talked about before, there's a monthly sewer bill that you're gonna to have to start paying once you're on the sewer. And of course that is currently paid. Uh, got some numbers there, so 2150 a month fixed charge with about 620 a per thousand feet of winter consumption. Oh, sorry, Millie, did you have a question? Yeah. Pull the microphone up, Tony. Yeah, these people in line um, Since I'm in Prescott North, the significant other cost, do you have a ballpark? It would be totally dependent on each house, how each house is plumbed, where your septic system is, where the main is in relation to that. It's not going to be Prescott North, they're all terrible. Yeah, Prescott North has issues with rock and things like that, but that's more the neighborhood main issue. The, the home, home connection issue is going to be where your house is on the lot, where the sewer main comes by your property, how your sewer currently flows. So it's going to be different for each house. One neighbor won't be the same as the other unless they're identical type houses. Are we looking 20,000 or more? Again, uh -huh. it depends on your house, your location, where the sewer main will be. Now, the neighborhood main cost is something the engineers will work up. You know, the cost to put the mains through your neighborhood and how those get paid are kind of the discussion that I was hoping to have today is where are some of these costs going to come from? Okay. Okay. All right, so funding options for these. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought I heard somebody. Um, hello, I'm, I'm on Zoom. I'm on Mike Brain. Okay. Yeah, I I'm, had sent Carrie a, a, a document from 2008 where you, the same issue was involved. And I was looking at the page eight of that. I sent it to Carrie, but in that document, the, the column for owner on lot can construction cost had an estimate of 5,000 for several areas and for North Prescott the estimate uh, in that column was $9,700 for the owner on lot connection cost which are not part of the sewers that's that document I thought would might serve as helpful uh, information to everybody so I sent it to Carrie and maybe everybody could get a copy of that uh, document of 611-2008 so I'll, I'll uh, let it go at that but anyway there's a, quite a few generated figures that people might like to see as compared to what we're coming up with today too. Well again, they not we're not we haven't come up with any numbers other than those very vague estimates. Yeah, I, I know that. I just I was just looking at the numbers that they had come up with and published in a previous time. For sure. And thank you for bringing that up. And yeah, back then we had done some actual engineering out there that was related to Prescott North at the time. But that was one approach and again 13 years ago or 12 years ago so you know who knows what that would be today but um as far as funding these we talked about a couple of different options i wanted to go over them grants of course grants are something we always look at um, for significant type projects frankly there are not a lot of large grants out there for this anymore all the large banding agencies the epa and others have shifted their funding to state revolving loan programs to help lower the cost of financing of these. And that goes through the EPA, uh, I'm sorry, EPA goes through Arizona WIFA. And it does a great job, and it can definitely be used for these as a special assessment loan we've done, a sewer district out in Fort Bend Park that was funded with a Arizona WIFA loan came in a very low interest rate for the homeowner. In that case, it was one big trailer park. Um, but that's an option to help fund these. Obviously, we talk about the city, the city, the city, just to clarify, 
The water and sewer funds are enterprise funds. They are not tax supported funds. No property tax goes to these funds. We talk about these funds paying costs that they don't for other users. We're talking about the other users contributing um, you know, more to cover these costs that are generally um, taken care of by the owners in the subdivision. So it's not the city general fund. There's legal issues with using general fund money for these. Uh, so it's going to be an increase in water rates and increase in sewer rates, whatever the committee and the council decide the funds should pay will result in weight increases across the board for all the other users as well. Just something to keep in mind. Doesn't mean it's a bad idea. It's just something to be aware of as we talk about the options. Obviously the property owner connection is the way we've always done them in the past. They pay the neighborhood lines, they pay the connection costs and their impact fees. Uh, like I say, it's, it's been the way we've done it, but obviously costs are a lot more significant than they were in the 70s and 80s when we did a lot of these. Um, so there's issues back then and still today we can use special assessment districts, which are a great way to do it for whatever cost do we have the homeowners pay. The way a special assessment district is works is the city will establish a district. Um, engineers will come up with the cost for each home and allocation percentage that goes to each lot and homeowners have the option to pay it up front or to let it go to bond and then pay it out over time with interest. So that, that, that means some people who just want to pay it up front don't pay interest can do that. Those who want to pay it out over 10 years or 15 years can do that. Uh, and again, that's where WIFA will come in. If we go, we go that way with any of this, uh, we can get lower cost financing. Again, WIFA financing has been very helpful to the city. The last bond we did was for a regional pump station, 30 year bond for $25 million at a 1.5% interest rate, which is great um, for money. Some other options I thought of at least to discuss. Um, we could obviously do a GO bond. And again, a bond is only a financing means. A GO bond is repaid with property taxes. So that would be an assessment on everything in the city limits uh, to, per property use to pay off these bonds to bring unsewered areas into the sewer system. There's some problems with that. A lot of the sewer areas that are on the map are not in the city. So obviously we cannot tax those could annex those and make them part of that. Um, so it, it's complicated as well as geo bonds require a vote of the population as, as a whole, of a whole. Um, another idea, which I think at least stands some discussion is to implement an additional fee on water accounts that do not have city sewer. And the theory here are that my, my thoughts here are, it costs more for us to serve water to somebody who is not returning sewer to us. Most houses, we serve them water, we get sewer back. It helps defer the cost of treatment. It helps defer the overdraft issues. If we serve you water and you don't get, when we don't get the sewer back, there's an additional cost to the city. So why shouldn't the person receiving water and not having sewer pay that? The thought being that we could establish a fee, whether it's a percentage or a fixed amount a month, that go into a fund for all 2,500, let's say, unsewered houses and those funds could be used to defray some of the cost spikes of all these areas so everybody pays some percentage more and then that fund is available to cover the neighborhood mains or to cover connection costs or however we want to approach that yes since we were grandfathered in to the city with septic and leach fields and the water came in out of Chino back in the 60s. And you funded Warbeam Park. What makes it different? I guess I don't know what you mean when you say Forbing Park. Uh, they're on sewer now, correct? Not all of them. There's one district that we did out there to bring it on sewer. And they did a special assessment and they paid all the, the neighborhood mains and the connection costs in that special assessment and then paid it off over 15 years. Okay. So nothing. We could do that. 
And again, we did that all through the 80s and with hundreds of assessment districts um, of different parts of town that we did this. Okay, and the gentleman that is on Zoom, I would like to just reiterate from our previous meeting because of the terrain, it was probably $40,000 in 2008. Yes, there is significant issues, and I know engineering is looking at different options that might be able to help make that more affordable. But the issue, got, yeah, I had a comment that I think she was addressing me, but on that, she was, you were talking about a water account with 2,500 homes and $10,000 uh, per home that's divided out over time. Um, even if, even if, that would be a $250,000. How do you recover, even begin to recover that on a water bill? Right. And again, I don't think you're going to recover at all. The thought is we're just trying to find different pieces that maybe we can piece together and make this more tolerable for everybody to make this go forward. Because again, in 2008, when we wrote that last thing, which you submitted a copy of, um, as well as the one we did in 2001 and the one we did in the 90s, it ends up dying. And our goal, obviously, is for this not to die, for us to be able to actually move something forward and get these areas sewered. Um, but the water account is, is like a, a drop in the bucket, uh, uh, no pun intended, um, compared to what the real cost is of the project. I mean, it's a, you could, it's like a sidebar, a little bit of money to recover. You're not really thinking that's an issue. That's a, uh, a viable way of getting a good per per percentage. I can't see even a hundred dollars a month, 1200 a year, it would take you, you know, hundred years to pay it off. Well, it, um, if we look at the current, currently we have a 30% charge on accounts that are outside the city. I believe it generates, and I'm sorry, I don't have my notes because of the way we have to do these meetings now, um, generates a couple hundred thousand a year, uh, just at that 30%. Um, obviously that 30% is part of our rate structure and not available just to be to be allocated to this, but if the committee is interested, if council wants us to proceed, we could go and do a new rate study, taking that aspect out for these unsewered houses and setting up a separate fund there. Um, again, those those are things to look at, and it would um, it would generate significant money. It's not like you say; it's not going to cover the full cost. It's going to have to be different approaches, which is kind of brings me to my last slide to kind of start talking um, about the different approaches. I took two combined approaches where uh, option one, of course, the water and wastewater fund would provide some incentive to lower the cost of the property owners that would come out of the user rates, if you will. The main cost would be funded through a special assessment district. This is a little different than we used to do in that not all the costs will be borne in the special assessment district, but maybe some level of rate increase across the board of sewer users to help bring these places in compliance is, is something council wants to consider. Uh, second approach has four different approaches. Same thing, some, some incentive from the water and wastewater funds, this uh, additional fee, additional percentage on the rates to help lower the overall cost. Revenue would be used to offset some neighborhood mains or, or residential costs. The property owners would be responsible for connecting to the sewer. And uh, this is kind of important. I know it addressed it in your 2008 um, frequently asked questions that we put out. Uh, it's important if the city is going to spend millions of dollars to put mains in the neighborhood that people are required to connect. If they're not required to connect, at least they have to pay a monthly sewer bill when the main is adjacent to their property. We cannot invest millions of dollars just for the main to be there someday in case a property owner wants it. There needs to be a revenue stream from that main to help pay for that main. So, those are my two approaches. Again, they are not the last I could have gone on for, you know, several more slides with different approaches. But the idea here is I think we need to find a combination of approaches to funding this so that we can move this project that's been, you know, going on for decades now 
forward and we can try to get get somewhere with it. I think the first thing in, in all these funding mechanisms, Omar, before you run off, is the, the fact that there needs to be a commitment by the council of what we're going to do as a city in each given area. You know, we have talked about, I've talked to the city manager of one year um, engineering an area in that same year, funding enough money to put in the main lines in that area. It's gonna come with a big cost, but I also think that people that aren't on sewer systems have got to understand the city can't afford to do both sides of the coin. So with that said, I think once we figure out what's palatable from most people on the committee, and I know that we're not all gonna agree, because we don't always often on city council, but we've got to come to a fair and equitable way to spread the cost. And the whole mission statement is really simple. It's not to pollute the creeks and the lakes, and it's also to recover and recharge and reuse the sewer to yield. So we have a ultimate mission as city residents and also county residents that use our sewer, our water system to make it the, mo the best that we can. So I'll just leave it at that and everybody, go ahead, Jane. Well, I just wonder, are there figures or, oh, sorry, no. are there figures or uh, what, ideas, anything that show what the rate charge does offset for these costs? I mean, is there any offsetting income for the recharge? Well, the revenue from recharge, which is addressed in the frequently asked questions we put out 12 years ago, which you haven't seen yet. No. Um, but uh, the the revenue from recharge obviously has a point in this, but that is used to lower sewer costs. You know, it costs quite a bit to turn what comes out of a house into rechargeable effluent. It doesn't just flow to the perp ponds and all of a sudden it's a benefit. There's a lot of costs. There's a currently a $45 million plant that's got to flow through. That plant's got to be paid for. There's maintenance, there's chemicals, there's employees, there's uh, all sorts of things that go into that. And the revenues from effluent go to offset the cost of the treatment of the sewage. Yeah, I think in that document, it basically says it's a, a a break even you don't make any money there's no money to 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 put to this project from affluent recovery exactly. it's what the, the cost of treating it is getting the sewage out of the environment correct basically. well and yes and the, the recharge water. doesn't hurt yeah yeah but there's not a like a, a large amount of offset there is the the, any offset, like I say, is used to cover the cost of turning it from sewage into effluent. I was going to say that um, it's it's really apparent to me that this will be necessarily a community project, meaning that everybody who's a citizen of Prescott, the Yavapai County, served by um, city water and sewer, and or not sewer, but uh, will have a need to be a willing participant in making this happen. It's not something that anybody wants to force on anybody, but it's something that we need to do, I think, as responsible citizens, because we've kicked this can down the road for decades, as Mark has said. Well, it, re it reminds me, and I hate to bring it up, CRS, you know, when you retire, you know, somebody's got to pay the backload of anything you do. If you always figure out that we've paid our share, then pretty soon everybody's share is gone. Right. So as a community, I agree with you 100%, Mark. There was a time when somebody else out there paid for my sewer that was put in, and I'm paying for somebody else's sewer that's being put in, and I think we have to come to that understanding. That's just what it's gonna be. And for somebody says, I, I paid for my sewer the whole entire time I've been here, and I don't wanna pay any more fees, that's just not gonna be the way it's gonna be. It can't be. Well, but the 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 my the benefit is to the entire. You're saying the benefit. What it is is to the entire community of the improvement of the aquifer, and I, if the last one was correct, then it would seem like everybody's invested in improving the aquifer as as opposed to only the people that were approved to have septic 
when these properties were uh, accepted into the city and you okayed septic to go as the uh, system but without putting sewer in or requiring sewer at that point whenever you did it with each of the communities. So now it's behooving the whole community to get this fixed. However, it's the communities that didn't get sewer um, when the projects were being approved and said septic was okay that are now uh, gonna, uh, are possibly br uh, bearing the br more of the brunt of the bill unless it's spread across the entire community. Yeah, and all those things in, in the world we live in today have changed. Um, I don't think you'll see one city council person agree to bring anything in on an annexation. I don't even think it's legal now unless they are on sewer and water treated by the city of Prescott. There is absolutely no benefit to do it. Uh, back in the day, maybe there was. Um, like when you start talking about Hoke again, I, I have no idea <clears throat> what the my thought was at the time when the council agreed to give them water, because if you did a financial impact study on it, there was no financial benefit to the city because there was no commercial or anything tied to that to make it. I know Antelope Hills, where I'm I'm a HOA president, it was sold by the city, as, as from my understanding, city owned the land and sold it and didn't bring sewer into it. That was the city's decision and they were the owner. Right, and I think I think part of that and what's changed in that picture is the fact that we had one sewer plant that was uphill from the Sundog treatment plant to get the wastewater to that. Right. All those wheels have changed to where now it's downhill from where you live to the sewer plant. So it makes sense. Uh, and I think overall, when you start talking about EPA and you start talking about the health of the community and why the council bought lots of their little reservoirs, uh, not only for recreation, but for water purposes, uh, we can't continue to allow septic systems that are failing to leach into our creeks and pollute our lakes because they're already impaired as it is. And at some point in time, if we don't start getting serious about it, and they put signs up that says no public access because they're impaired to the point where we can't use them, that would be a shameful thing for this community. So this is a time to respond. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so, but we now have the data right. to prove what the advantages of our sewer uh, systems have to the recharge as opposed to septic. So that's, right. that's a huge advantage for us now to include that because you city has gone and been doing things that now show that it, it is working. And then none of these things, and I think Craig would, uh, and even Mark sitting here would attest to in the last 20 years of upsizing our reservoirs, and uh, all our water tanks and all of our water lines and our replacement, our sewer lines and the millions and millions of dollars that we've spent to make the infrastructure in Prescott better. This is kind of the last part of making that infrastructure better is to not only make it environmentally safe, but also to give people a better quality of life. You know, I think Jane down here said they've changed their system out three or four times now and uh, still have issues probably, no doubt. But and I think that's the thing. You can say, well, my septic's never had a problem. My leach lines work fine. Yeah, sure. They're in fractured rock and it runs right through the rock, right into the creek bed. So we know where that sewage is coming from. We've already determined that and we have to respond to that. But Mr. Good, uh, along with the gentleman, we're not, the, the people on septic are not the only polluters. Sure, we understand. But, but yet, it sounds like we will be bearing, uh, bearing the cost. Well, people that are I, I, part of the city of Prescott now bear the cost of putting in new infrastructure when it comes to the sewer main lines. If we find those leaking in the middle of a creek, it's the citizens of Prescott that are paying for it. And that is the city. The city is putting that bill. And so it's been my opinion, I think Mark knows as long as I've been here, it's always been my attitude that the city has an obligation to put in the sanitary sewer lines. So we have to make sure that we're addressing that. If it comes to a burden where somebody has to hook up from main line to their homes, that's going to have to be the, the burden that they pay. They're going to get a service that's probably way better. And Ultimately, if you sell your house, you'll reap the benefits from it being on a sewer system rather than on a septic. Yeah. Really kind of a shameful way to put it, but it's the truth. Is there a study uh, that shows the amount of septics out there that are polluting? 
I don't I think, think there is. is. Uh, Craig may be able to respond to that. The hard part about that is, is you never know what condition they're in until they're inspected, and, and that doesn't happen that often. And we, we don't have a specific study that says this septic and this septic and this septic are failing. What we have is the studies on the watershed and showing where specific pieces of our watersheds are impaired and they have been linked back via DNA <coughs> of the of the water that links it to human feces, essentially. So that's how we know on watersheds that that is being directly impaired by, uh, by the septic systems in there. Um, we ha currently have a, an engineering review going on it, that's going to look at all of the existing unsewered areas, the number of them, the, the potential affluent production or return uh, via the sewer system, if all of them are on uh, the sewer system. So we'll have each individual area. So we'll have a estimated amount of, of sewage that would come from those to the treatment plant. Um, we're going to look at the availability of the existing city sewer system and its capabilities to accept these areas, as well as then um, a high level review of what each individual area would take to um, build, construct uh, sewer in those areas. It will not have specific um, cost requirements at this point. But that's what will help us all as we continue with this process. It'll help us towards the end with priorities of as we start looking at all of these areas, then we're, as far as putting them into a priority list or the most feasible and financially obtainable, it'll put them in a priority list for us then for us all to review and, and consider areas then versus you know, my area versus your area. Um, so it will help guide us that way. Um, yeah, because some of them are going to be tough. I mean, yeah. North Prescott's not going to be easy, nor is the Mountain Club for, mm -hmm. for the most part. So when you start talking about how we're going to do this, we got to show good faith uh, in doing it. So we might take the low apple on the tree and look at antelope hills, knowing where it's at, and what kind of, you know, ground those systems are in and how easy it would be to get to the plant. I don't know. It seems to me that that's the closest one to the sewer plant. So... Yeah, I, I, I live in Antelope Hills. Most of the property owners have their, their uh, exit point on the low side. And if you put the, if you put the sewer down the street, uh, everybody's got a, an issue with replumbing their entire house to get it over there. So that, and then I don't know who pays for the cost estimates to do that. That could be prohibitive. To, you get hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Somebody come out and estimate every job. That would be the engineer's plan to give them instruction to put it in in the easiest way of course why would we put it in the hardest way if we know all those houses over there are plumbed to the back it would make a lot of sense to put them in the back Prescott valley when they were forced by the epa to put in sewer system i had properties out there and they ran them down behind the houses because all the houses had the septics in the backyards so that made a lot yeah of but sense. the houses face each other one backyard is the opposite side of the other backyard no. so you put it down the street uh, middle of the street, which would seem to be the most logical. The last time they talked about it, every house is going from the back to the front, and, you, and they, unless unless you put lines down backs of, and and then they rewind all over the place. I know it was there was a lot of contention with uh, where are they going and what what's going to take for me to get there. Uh, Twelve years ago, and uh, people people who have cement or stuff, some people were ten thousand bucks, and th that they reported to me that what's going to cost them to to hook up, so um, not not including the city cost, just to get it over there. So um, there was, I think it's an issue that every single lot owner right. will have to deal with. There's also the opportunity, too, if this moves forward, is for the city to enter into a maybe a contract with a plumbing company or two to get the prices down cheaper, knowing that they would be getting all the jobs within that, you know, improvement district area, there would be some benefit to going out for RFQ and RFP for a couple of companies that may save the homeowner a couple thousand dollars, but we don't know that yet. 
Well, right, yeah, obviously, yeah. And, and then the other thing, obviously, is there's people who have replaced their systems. I have one person. All the services are done simultaneously, then yes, there can definitely be that benefit of, of more work. And while they're there, you don't have mold for multiple properties. There definitely can be a savings associated with that. Um, Mark, you have pre presented several different ideas and, and mm -hmm. methods here. Um, it seems like at some point too, we talked about, so in regards to the potential customer's cost, um, is that something that the, that the city could finance and then the customer could have a monthly payment associated with that mm -hmm. in order to also help with that? As, excuse me, as opposed to like an assessment district? You mean just like a monthly addition on the bill? Yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of different options. Um, we'd have to run that by legal, but I would think that would be okay to some level. The, the issue you run into is, as we've been talking about, is the costs are so variable. One house might be $7,000, another house $10,000. So I don't think... From, a, from an approach, I'm not sure you could you could have a different cost in each house that you collect on a monthly water bill until it's paid off type of thing, because that would just be too much uh, bureaucracy, if you will, in that, as opposed to, you know, uh, we talked about 30%, which is our current fee. If we look at the houses that are not in the town of Chino Valley, that 30% water charge right now generates about 400,000 a year, which is sufficient to um, finance probably $10 million at current rates, even maybe a little bit more, which could be used uh, for quite a bit of those costs. Um, or like you say, we could just say, okay, the city will take care of those costs, but every property owner has to pay $5,000, $10,000 for those connection costs which is $50 or more on your bill for however long that takes or, you know, approaches like that, I think they're all options. Um, I think we need to come up with more of a generic approach than as opposed to trying to get the actual cost of each of the different properties. And I think it has to be a, frankly, for financing purposes, it needs to be a, a you know, almost a one size. First got North, okay, everybody gets $50 more on their bill until X dollars are received by each account type of thing as opposed to, well, what do you want to do? Because if you do that, obviously people who have, have it relatively cheap will do it on their own. People who have it really high will do it through the program, which gets rid of the benefit of kind of having a collective approach to spread these costs out. And that's where we all together have got to be creative and come up with a multitude of ideas in order to get a complete package and make it attainable. Right. If Corn wanted to put in a new sewer system, water system for the town or city of Maricopa, and they went before the Arizona Corporation Commission and said, we're going to bill everyone that we bought water companies from to share the cost with Maricopa. And there were lots of lawsuits and, and things like that, that the Corporation Commission sided with EPCOR. And then they gave EPCOR Johnson water problems. Would the Arizona Corporation Commission be a funding source or do they just approve? Mm -hmm. The Corporation Commission is not a funding source, it's a regulatory agency for publicly owned, not publicly owned, privately owned public utilities like APS, like uh, different water companies. The city of Prescott as a municipality is not governed by the Corporation Commission. That was my legal opinion. That's correct. Looking at the nature of what it is. Well, and it just sounds like what Mark was saying here that we've got to get everybody on board in the whole city. I mean, how many are we looking at when that map was up there with all the little areas that were on septic? You it looked that. like about a third. About 2,672. 
2,600 septic systems? 2,672 is the count that, that we currently And that compares to how many total? 21,000, so maybe 12% okay. more. So I was thinking maybe it was higher than that. Well, again, yeah. part of the, again, part of the problem we get into is a lot of these are outside the city, okay, right. the mountain club. Which which give different different problems, uh, limit you know, preclude certain uh, options like a, a geo bond that goes across the city as a whole could be a relatively low cost to everybody and provide a big pot of money. But again, the people outside the city would not be <laughs> subject to that, uh, which would kind of kill it because uh, you know paying for somebody else's sewer is one thing when they're your fellow citizen. But, when they're not paying anything because they're outside the city is another issue. Uh, when we, in, in years past, under the standard improvement district process, it was requirement for those people who were going to be beneficiaries of those improvements, 50 plus one percent, 50 percent plus one had to agree to that. Are those kinds of uh, hurdles still in front of us? Those hurdles are, are there that I believe there it's it's the city council can form an improvement district um, Notification goes out to property owners and if 50 plus 1% object to it. It kills the district. So it's not a positive vote. It's a negative vote, which is a small matter because if they don't want it, it's not going to happen, which is what happened in North Prescott. One of the times we tried it. And I don't even think it came to the actual objections. There was just significant objections. So it was oh, the cost. The cost is an issue on all these. Right. That's why the other funding options. Part of Prescott North had pumps, lift stations. Could they be included not per resident, but as part of the sewer system? There's there's the ability to have a multitude of different types of sewer collection systems. Um, the, the best system for the city to own operating that is a standard gravity collection system where everything just flows away gravity. Then we have multiple areas within the city that require lift stations. So you have a small gravity system, it'll flow down to a low point and we have a pump station that pumps it up and over a hill and then it'll continue going in another gravity. So that, or then there are LPS, low pressure sewer systems. Um, currently the city does not own, operate, maintain any LPS systems. But we also realize as we are looking at this endeavor, that situation we're in, we may have to be changing our, our thought and concept towards LPS systems and that we may need to um, dive into that as part of our system as well. Especially like Prescott North, there's so much of it um, that LPS is, is the only financially feasible means to accomplish a sewer system in that area. And there are other areas that would be the same way. Um, mountain clubs would be very well to be like that as well. Is there any way that you can put a sewer system in the ravines or the backyards that form the V for the valley and that way lift stations and pumps won't be needed? I, I chuckle because we have thousands and thousands of feet of that currently in the system. Um, then there are, are direct other challenges that go with that as far as operations and maintenance. The sewer system isn't something that you just put in the ground and forget about. We have to go there a minimum of every three years in order to clean it. So then you have all of those access challenges. Plus when it's in every one of those ravines, that just increases the potential that we end up with I and I water inflow and infiltration into the sewer system. So then that has the potential then to overrun the, the sewer system's carrying capacity and creates another challenge there. So yes, in, in the world of uh, going with a gravity system, 
have the, those valleys and ravines, they all flow downhill. So that would benefit that. There are many other challenges that, that go with it. And that's why we may need to be looking at, you know, towards the LPS side to achieve some of these. A question, it may sound kind of silly, but is there any rule or law against having a sewer line on top of the ground if it's ductile iron? Like saying, right, running through some of those ravines rather than putting it underground, it stays on top of the ground? A whole system. I, I, yeah. The point I'm trying to make is it, it, it may be a lot less expensive and most people that are out in North Prescott, I'm gonna speak for myself, but I have sewer. But if it's in the back of my house running down a ravine, and I can get it several thousand dollars cheaper. I'm not sure I'd have a problem with that as long as it's stuck to iron and camp. It uh, would be an interesting concept. Um, definitely then as far as gravity, then, then you've got the challenge of you still need to have that, that manhole access. So then you would have that above the ground there. Um, and there definitely would be engineering challenges to and requirements associated with ADQ, EPA and such. I understand. I was just curious. Well, I, I'd just point out if any of you have hiked from the back of Goldwater Lake down into Hidden Valley, that's a ductile iron water line that is above ground and broken all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not, you had to bring it's not it up to be broken. Yeah, and actually it's, it's cast iron. Yeah. It goes back further than that. And yes, it was full of water and, and froze. It's not so what are we looking at to do, Craig, right now is to give you a head nod of a preferable financing financial system, you know, or mark? I mean, how do we proceed from here? I think uh, my goal was to throw out some different ideas for the commissioners to start thinking about, the committee members to start thinking about realizing that I think it's going to have to be a multi-pronged approach. Um, we're still working on different costs associated with it. Um, I don't know if we need to come up with a fixed way we want to do it today. Obviously, anybody in the unsewered areas would like the number one on each of these approaches, which is for have the other ratepayers pay a portion of the cost. I don't think it's realistic. Uh, for somebody in North Prescott to think, or any place, not just North Prescott, um, to think that the rest of the ratepayers are going to pay the full cost of hooking up their property. There is going to have to be additional costs paid by the individual property owners as well, um, as well as maybe, you know, we look at a rate differential where we have a percentage on these um, water accounts that don't return sewer and we start accumulating a fund. Like I say, initially, uh, just back of the envelope, the 30% of your right charge, you know, would be sufficient to actually finance pretty significant money, 10 million, obviously, all 2,600 of these properties is going to be a hundred and some millions of dollar type of approach at some point, but we aren't going to do it all next year or the year after. It's going to have to be piecemeal. So maybe start thinking, well, that's a good approach, even though that's going to hit the people who are on sewer right away, that they can start accumulating money to help cover those costs so they wouldn't have to be rolled into an improvement district. I have a question when you said that, though. And then maybe we also have um, special assessment districts when we go into North Prescott, but it's not the 20000 or 30000 per lot that the cost is actually at. Maybe it's a fixed amount and the remainder of the cost come out of this fund. See, my, my point is we tried doing it the way we've always done it because the cost has gone up so much it fails every time. So we need to look at this more, you know, full approach, but I don't think we need to decide today if that's going to be, but we could start talking about it. Is there an objection to part of the cost, obviously, being paid for by the other water and wastewater rate payers? Ultimately, I think from my standpoint, just as a chairman, I would like to have everybody go home and think about this, first of all. Second of all, I want to let everybody know, even though we only meeting once a month, that our staff is working on the engineering and breaking down these different areas. And I think that, Mark, I know that maybe you've started, but I think that there has to be an understanding that we need to go back out and do a study on 
what we need to do as far as increasing the sewer rates to make this happen in each of these individual areas. Understanding we might not be able to do that outside in the county, but we could, as you and I have talked, assess a fee that has to do with sewage to those people for future. Yes. I have a comment from Jim Hazelbaker. Okay. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Ask him to unmute. Oh. Ask him to unmute. Could, could you unmute, please? Can you hear me now? We can hear you, Jim. Yeah. Okay. I don't mean to throw cold water on this. and I'm, I'm not throwing cold water on it. I just want to throw this out there to all of you people for something to think about. My wife and I and several other in North Prescott tried to go through and get a sewer back in the 90s. The main objection every time was what it was going to cost. This, this area was annexed in 72. And I know Steve Blair will remember there was a gentleman at one of the council meetings, walked in and said, and I'm, I'm not trying to drag up old things, but it's got to be said. When they, entered, when they came to this gentleman, there were four homes in North Prescott. And they, he said, we will provide all city services. And the old man said, hold on just a second. He came back with his checkbook and said, tell me how much it's going to cost for my sewer. Oh, we'll get that. We'll, we'll get that all set up later. Well, it's new, now 2000, almost 2021. There's no sewer up here. If you come in here and I, or combination approach one sounds good until you come up with what you're going, what the assessment is going to be. Most of these people in this area, and I would imagine in Antelope Hills and some of the other areas are retired. If you're gonna tack on a thousand dollars a year onto their water bill for X number of years to put in a sewer, there's gonna be a whole lot more people not wanting the sewer than did in the 90s when we went through here. This was a, this was a, this should have all been done back when the annexation took place. And nobody back then had the intestinal fortitude to enforce that. To come back on these people now, 30 years later, 40 years later and say, we're going to, uh, we're going to assess a, a, you might as well just say it, we're gonna assess a penalty to each one of your homes that has to be paid. I want, uh, that's something that every one of us needs to think about. And I may be speaking out of turn, which I have done. Steve Blair knows me, I, I just tend to tell it like it is. You do, and you, you said it pretty clear, but if that's the case, then we don't need to meet any longer. Uh, well, we're going to, not, not that we don't need to meet any longer, Steve. We've got to come up with some way to finance this thing that's fair to everybody. I agree with you. I, 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 as I said that when I opened my mouth, I'm not trying to throw cold water on this. Right. But we have to come up with a reasonable, and I mean a very reasonable cost, if you want to convince everybody that's not sewered to go on sewer. And I understand that, but where, where, where our drag is, and I think staff would agree, is the fact that we have so many given areas that we have to look at each one of them individually because you can't put them all in the same hat because there's different costs for each one of them. So that's why doing these meetings aren't happening engineering and through Craig and, and everybody out here, they're working on trying to get the best numbers they can for each individual area because Antelope Hills may be a whole lot less than North Prescott. But at some point in time, um, we need to make it happen because I have the attention of the mayor and of the city manager and most of the council that 
this has got to be priority one. Uh, several years ago, we made it priority one to have connectivity of sidewalks, and we have come a long way uh, with connecting our community for pedestrian walkways. We have to do the same thing with the sewer. So, go ahead, Mark. When, when, when the city is able to implement a program over a project is when we will be successful as a community. So we're talking about definitely a long-term process in order to accomplish this goal. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be many years. And so that's where people have to be willing and flexible and understand that the long-term objective and goal is in our best interest without a question. Jane, do you have some? Well, I just have a question about, um, are there authorities, say the EPA or the state or someone, that says once we reach a certain population size that you have to have city sewer throughout your city? No, I, I don't think there are. There are obviously um, violations of Clean Water Act and things like that. Um, I mean, again, we talked 2,600 accounts spread out outside our city, you know, very, not very few, but a, not a majority by any means of those are inside the city. So a very small percentage of inside the city are not sewered. I think Prescott North is the biggest one. Um, so, you know, I don't, there is no agencies that says everybody has to be sewered. I mean, obviously we've seen cities like Lake Havasu, like Prescott Valley, um, who have put sewer in when there was no sewer in the community as a whole. And those are the thing, you know, Chino didn't, didn't really get the whole, whole thing done. It was a very small system, I believe, out there. Whereas Lake Havasu was the whole city. And I think that was driven by violations on water pollution in the lake there. Um, Prescott Valley, again, back then, those who were around back then know that Prescott Valley had an issue every time it rained. <laughs> Um, but again, it was a lot easier back then. We had dirt roads. You know, it's a lot different than Prescott is. Thank you, Craig. <coughs> Mark, good job on the funding options. They were various components. I get the hookup and why we want to do it. The willingness should be there. I feel that it's probably part of this commission's job and maybe along with the city of Prescott. We don't even know what our homes, the homeowners currently connected to septic, think about this. We have not done a, a survey, putting something in their water bill that they're hooked up to city water. And I feel we've got the cart before the horse a little bit here. We're talking about funding when, again, we haven't looked at or established some sort of realistic policy of when we want to bring these septic users on board. Because I don't want us to be this big brother. You are going to do this too bad. You just installed a new septic system six months ago, but we're making you hook up to sewer. We have got to tread so lightly with that and do it in a way where the city, you look like shining stars and what you're trying to do for the watershed and the environment. I guarantee you, there are septic users out there who could care less about the watershed and the environment. How do we educate and where do we go? We get it, but they don't. And I think the other important thing we're going to find out is, Craig, with all of your engineering work you're doing, it's going to be interesting to know if our existing plants can accept and bring in all this extra sewer we're looking at from your 2,600 homes. And our, our plants are capable then they'll be looking at the existing collection system in yes. the general vicinity. And then that way it'll identify if we have this many homes on, What's the there problem? may already be a capital improvement project that says this line needs to be upsized, but then this will, will add that to it. So then we'll know whether we can connect all these and we don't need to do anything downstream 
or if we connect all of these and we have to do this additional work in association with the addition of those connections. And so if we, let's just say we think we decide, crazy idea, but we decide it's going to be special improvement districts. Here's the policy, write up and send it out. Now how do we deal with the users that are on septic systems? We, we can't go in and take that away from them. I almost think that that needs to be our first start and our first process to look at what we do. And, and that would go back to, I believe it was meeting number one, yes. where we talked about looking at all of the different situations on when do we consider that the properties need to connect. But we so haven't we, decided anything with that. It's still out there. And that's where we, we need input on well, it. I, I, again, I think it goes back, Sandy, and I am going to say it, and I think Jim Hazelbaker said it the best, it's all about cost. So I, I think we, I think they have to go hand in hand together to say North Prescott, here's what we have determined through engineering is going to cost you, and then understand how we're going to bring the people once we put the system on, how we bring them off the septic onto the system. Well, now whether it's incentives, uh, you know, you get so much off by paying in full or paying in quarters, or when you sell a house, you have to hook up. There's a lot of things that need to be investigated, but I think they have to go, we have to go together on this because the cost and the method should be simultaneous, and that's what we have to work on. I, I appreciate what you're saying, but from, a, from an investment standpoint, if you put sewer lines in North Prescott and say, oh, well, you can just hook up whenever you want. That means all the rest of the ratepayers are going to cover the cost of those sewer lines until you decide to hook up. Um, that's a significant burden on the rest of the community. I'm not sure that that's a financially responsible approach. If you say you just have to decide, you have to hook up at some point, but once that sewer line is by your house, you're paying a monthly sewer bill, but you can wait on the 5000 10000 whatever that cost is to hook up until whenever you know, at that point yeah. you know at that point from the financial manager's standpoint i don't care because i'm receiving revenue from that sewer main and i'm able to pay for it pay off the debt service line um, so you could do an approach like that where you don't have to hook up but you're going to pay a monthly sewer bill once that line's available but then there's an incentive put in place to have them do it sooner than later yeah or we could even do incentives which is kind of the first bullet on both of the approaches is other ratepayers pay something, whether it's the water fund pays the impact fee or whatever we come up with. Well, I, I don't know, I, I'm not gonna speak for everybody here, but I'd be one that would absolutely agree with once the city goes to engineering, goes to construction, that once that line's in place in the neighborhood, that they start paying a sewer assessment fee on their water bill. Well, absolutely. Whether they're hooked up or not, because we have to pay for that somehow. We got to pay for that line. So I would I would support that 100. percent But do we have to go back and get a rate study to understand what those rates are going to be? Yes, we would by by um, state Arizona by statute we'd have to do a rate study anytime we increase rates, and this is kind of a significant change to our rates. Um, but again, that's not a huge deal. That's not a study like an impact fee study, which is a consultant from hundreds of thousands of dollars and nine months of brain damage to everybody involved. It's um, it can be a relatively simple study. We've done it in-house before. We could even get a consultant to do it, but it would be much cheaper than a full-on impact fee and rate study. Would, would that, well, I guess it wouldn't be, but that rate study would only be done because of the citizens inside the city and not in the county where we serve the war. The rate study would be for a whole system. Okay. We look at it as a whole. And again, we would take whatever approach this, this committee recommends to council and council wants us to explore or implement whether that's an additional fee on the water for people not connected with once a line is in people paying their share you know we would incorporate all those different options or approaches into that rate study that's fair enough okay. but sir wouldn't you be putting it out on a study where everyone pays the same price for the study but yet you're going to charge individual 
homeowners different prices? What's the hookup? Well, rate study is deals with rates is you know as far as the cost of the treating the sewage and running the sewer system with maintenance as opposed to those individual costs of actually hooking up a property. You know, that's the other key here is how are we going to pay that? If the committee says, oh, well, we want to establish a fund that generates X number each year to cover those costs for an area, do that through a percentage increase to everybody who is in this identified area that we want to see sewer, you know, we can include that in the rate study if that's the 30% that's there now or 40%, you know, whatever it takes, depending on the projected implementation of this, as Mark said, which I thought was a good point as a citywide plan to make this happen as opposed to a plan for Lord Prescott, a plan for Antelope Hills. And it's got to be a all-inclusive plan. I would agree. It's everybody's problem, not just one one section. So, I mean, you don't, you won't, and you, you haven't in a long time seen anything come into the city that doesn't have a sanitary sewer or water. And I don't think that'll ever happen again. Uh, look at the mess, North Prescott. I think that's the last one. But look at the mess that got us into. And Hazel Baker knows it was a mess back then. And, you know, promise is only good as long as the guy's alive, and he's long gone. Right, Mr. Fuller, just as a backup, Yavapai Hill came in after Prescott North by the same developer, Bill Gary. He took over uh, suburban acres from Shackleford. Mm -hmm. And so is there any way to go back? I, I know Bill Gary died, but is there any grandfathering, any? I think that term's overused 100% of the time because again, and maybe our lawyers back there look at me. He always frowns when I talk. Why does he always frown when I talk? I'm actually agreeing with you. That's what's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You think there's no such thing as grandfathering a sewer line in, is there? No, 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 no. But uh, I'm saying that the Apple Pie Hills, you're saying that. Well, going back on somebody, you know, because, you know, the Apple Pie Hills was sold to the Klein family years and years ago. So. All those things that happened back then or back then. Well, and again, Yep by Hills had a sewer system. It was a privately held sewer system that was run by the, I believe the HOA or the developer. And, and then we uh, we abandoned that sewer plant and ran. So that's not running through the streets through individual sewer lines. That was just plumbing that sewer plant output into our treatment plant. It was a whole different issue. And that was one of those anomalies where they were annexed in, annexed out, and then annexed back in. Yeah, and I can tell you that there is no real legal concept of grandfathering. It just doesn't exist. You know, in zoning, we use legal non-conforming use. Uh, in constitutionally, we use a, what's called ex post facto, which means you can't create a crime, a criminal law, and then apply it to some act that, that is before, <coughs> before the act occurs. But there's a, there is no, you're right, Blair, Council Member Blair, there is no, concept of grandfathering and and uh, in, in the case of um, I can tell you when I was in Sedona in the, in the late 90s the city was under an ADEQ mandate to sewer the city because the septic tanks were polluting Oak Creek and the city went through and, and basically paid millions and millions of dollars uh, and there were both grants and with the loans and things like that to do that to sewer the whole city and 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 I basically adopted a city code. This is you have six months to and once that sewer line is in front of your house, you have six months to connect. And then the city would go and effectively use the court system to, to force that. So there's a big policy decision, I think Mark's right, is which I don't say very often. Uh, but there's a big policy decision that has to be made is and there were other, there were other tools that the city used to help finance some of those connection costs and impact fees. But even back then, I think in the late 90s, the, the sewer connection impact fee was something around two or $3,000 per house, which is kind of what we charge now. Uh, and, and then of course the wrinkle there is, is there's a private water company in Sedona. So it was strictly just the sewering part. There was no tie to water. So, so I think what Mark's, I, you know, listen to what Mark's talking about and, and when you're sort of pushed back to a degree is, you got to figure out this, what the solution is. 
in a holistic way. You can't just talk about, well, my neighborhood this, or when I moved in that, you got to talk about it holistically. You got to talk about how you're going to fight against it. And you got to talk about how you're going to do it and what level of sort of pressure um, or force, whatever you want to describe, you're going to use to, to get people to get on board. And if it's a, if somebody's going to pay a sewer fee, whether they hook up or not, plus a surcharge to help them offset the cost of that hookup later on, that is, that does create some level of incentive. You just have to be careful about fees turning into taxes because they're two different processes to adopt. And taxes are much more complicated and harder to, to pass through. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I have a comment from Jim Hazelbaker as well. Jim, are you unmuted? I'm unmuted, but can you hear me? Go right ahead, sir. I think this is just one man's opinion. I think we need to find out what the cost, and I don't think anybody's going to nail your foot to the floor, but what a cost is going to be for North, North, for Antelope Hills or the, the golf course out there and give the people a general idea. When you use force of law or force of decree, on people. I would rather see us spend the money putting the sewer in at less cost to the taxpayer, less cost to the ratepayer, less cost to the sewer, unsewered areas, than battling this damn thing out in court for the next 10 years. Because there's going to be people, as, as Mr. Blair knows very well, there's an attorney that lives up here that will fight this tooth and nail. Am I right, Steve? He still lives there. Yes, you're right. Yes, he does. And he lives up on the top of the hill. And water and sewage flows downhill. This is one of the gentlemen that you're talking about that couldn't care less. So to entice and get people on board, you may agree or you may disagree. People need to know all the information and not be lied to. Just give them the facts. Let them, let them decide on the facts, not on hearsay, not what the next door neighbor, not what somebody in, in, in Antelope Hills told them. What is going to affect that homeowner directly? Thank you. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, thank you, Councilman. You know, it, uh, it kind of appears to me that we have information from 2008 that was the most current engineering estimates that we had and i think you still have that information do you not that's correct and we do this and so you know we can paint a broad brush understanding of costs based on that without doing any any more real engineering to know what a given area might cost it might be worthwhile to 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 take a bite of that apple and 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 look at which area, as you had talked about before, the low hanging fruit, and and use that as the basis for developing just just one of the more simpler areas of how we can go forward and and make something effective. And uh, absolutely, we can pull that information out and uh, and have that to look at as a basis. It's. If, if we can help it, we shouldn't spend more money on creating another estimate because then that's just money and we won't have to put pipe in the ground. Right. I agree 100%. And, and that <clears throat> any of the to adjust to it a little bit uh, and knowing that, at least as far as what I'm hearing, is totally different than what we heard back in 08, 07, um, and the city wasn't wanting to step up to be much of a help other than facilitate that it needed to be done and, and what I'm hearing now is that the city's willing to step up and do engineering and possibly mainline stuff but again it comes with the rates that have to be paid by the people that use the facilities and that includes the sewer plant and the pipes and everything that goes along with it so I think we're at a point where I'm hearing pretty much say from everybody shaking their head yeah we need to have that but I would not go with the low ball, easy access of sewer, but 
pick either a challenge one so that the people can understand it's going to cost them X amount of dollars. If I remember right, the 2008 study will have costs associated with at least, I want to say four areas, four or five areas. Then Martin, Marco pulled it up here. Um, okay, four. This is from the frequently asked questions that were sent in, which we put out in 2008. And, and this is 2008. And as Mark Woodfill mentioned, there have been several others in the 90s, in the 80s, and that when sewer expansion has been contemplated. Um, to my knowledge, every one of those included total cost recovery by the property owners. Yes, and that is our policy now. That has been our policy for the last 40 years is in the unsewered areas. When they come in, the cost is put on the property owners the same as it is in a new subdivision. If you buy in a new subdivision, you're paying all the sewer costs, and that's been our approach. That's how we've done it for several districts over the years. But again, in an effort to try to come with a holistic approach to get rid of these unsewer, staff anyway again we're not the city council is recommending you know the city cover some part of this out of rates and fees so that would be, excuse me that would be taking that first column public system that and putting it as a city's stats of going out and putting that amount onto the fees yeah, that's part. an approach um you know that's that's an approach that can be taken forward, you know, from the committee to council. It's not really an option that staff can say. Can you put that together? Oh, wait, but I, well, can you put that together where we eliminate that as knowing that might go on fees, and then look at what that monthly equivalent might be per property owner? I mean, we can do anything, but again, these are twelve-year-old numbers. I'd be reluctant to put too much weight on because the yeah. engineering cost increase is probably double that. Well, and what is the bonding rate? <laughs> Bonding rate's actually a little lower than that, 4%. Uh, the county just issued $65 million to build a jail. You guys might have heard of that. Um, their 30-year uh, bond was about 2.3 for an all-in interest cost. And this would be, of course, being able to be funded from WIFA, which has an su additional subsidy. So we would expect it to be maybe half that. I can just, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I can just see problems, of course, in pitting areas against each other um, who are having to say pay more. Like I'm looking up there going, well, why is North Prescott 9700 for owner on lot connection cost? And the others are only five or whatever. And it just seems that an approach where we present it as a whole rather than these little Exactly, and that's what, yeah. yeah that's what, we, that's that's what we're talking about. Everybody pays yeah. 10,000, 5,000, whatever to hook up the property. I'm glad we're all on that page. Yes? I do have one public comment. Okay. From Power Mechanics. <laughs> yeah, I can find you too. Howard, would you unmute, please? Howard, you out there? It's not cocktail time. Did I? Can you hear me now? I can hear you, Howard. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to follow up, and I appreciate the the time uh, to make the comment that I wanted to follow up on what Sandy and Jim said. Uh, I think everybody has commented that this is going to be expensive, and we've talked about the costs of doing uh, going ahead and sewering a lot of areas. What we haven't talked about is what the costs are of not sewering these areas. We've, we've talked about uh, our aquifer and our waterways and our lakes and the damages, but I think uh, as Sandy mentioned, some people don't really care about that too much, especially when compared to forking out thousands of dollars. So I think what the committee needs to look at is this angle, what is the cost of not doing this versus what is the cost of doing it? And, and we have to show how 
it's better to spend now instead of spending later. It may cost more later if the state comes down on us. Uh, I think that's the way to get the public behind this uh, on the financial end. I'd like to get everybody on board on the environmental angle, but as Sandy mentioned, I don't think everybody's going to get on board and you'll have more arguments. But if you can win the financial argument, I, I think it's going to be easier. So uh, that's, and I also think in regards to that, how much is that house going to be improved in value? If somebody, has, if they're investing $5,000 and they're going to be hooked up into a sewer system, I think that's going to be a good return on the $5,000. That's, that's my comments. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks. I have one more comment from member Green. Mike Green. Michael, are you there? Unmute. This is Mike Green, yeah. Yeah, go right ahead. At the last meeting, I know you talked about some funding sources. I did a bunch of research. If you look nationally, this is a national problem. This isn't our Prescott only community. The aquifer issue is all the way across the country. And I know they solve some of the big issues, you know, with some of the environmental pollution with the Superfund. I think part of the issue could be a solution is some infrastructure money and some political lobbying to get some money out in the next infrastructure bill for aquifer improvement, I think it, it, it could be a, a way to, to come up with big money because we're looking at $25 million for this kind of project. And I know that when it went by in Antelope Hills in 08, I looked at the, they did a survey and I got, I have the feedback, I'm looking at it and it wasn't very popular to, to do this. And I, I have residents that have, have already talked to me, have spent 15,000 bucks in the last three months to put in a new system and remortgage their house to do it. So uh, that's the kind of issue that the other gentleman, Jim, was mentioning that's not going to go over too well with the people who just spend a bunch of money. And uh, I know when they put that line out in Chino just recently, the, uh, the and then this is what is, they say are across the country. If I look at all the different programs that every city is offering, like we're trying to accomplish, a lot of them have some base money with grants and then they allow the people to hook up as their system fails. I think that's the one that seems to be the one that most cities around the country are having success getting people on board that they don't have to buy in uh, and, and hack a, and undo their, their perfectly good system or one they replaced in the last two years uh, to join in. They, they, uh, I'm sure people would, wouldn't mind paying a sewer fee uh, to, to have the potential to hook up eventually, but uh, to have to, to double their bill uh, when they just spent it. Um, and I know when they put it out on Chino on Center Drive, it was requirement that only those that were new hookups had to hook up. If you wanted to hook up, uh, you could, and, but then if your system failed, you had to hook up. That seems to be the, the tenant across the country of all the different cities I looked into. And I looked into about 40. 40 cities put out their information about the same issue and you can read it all. And I'm happy to provide my research to the committee of all what the other cities around the country are doing. But I think a national uh, program of infrastructure, if we, we talk to our uh, national representatives, see if that could be in a bill, I think uh, it would solve a lot of cities' problems. A lot of them are talking the same issue and a lot of them are talking a national solution and not a local uh, neighborhood by neighborhood solution, which is really hard to accomplish without uh, a lot of angst. We can't even get work, but thanks, Michael. Okay, Jim, Jim, you unmuted? Yep. Go right ahead, sir. There's something that we're not looking at here too, Steve. And we're just going over the top of it. There's how many gallons of water just on these, these four areas do you propose would be going into the aquifer as treated sewer water? Use that as an incentive to get these people like the 440 up here in North Prescott. I mean, we go through, I think my, we go through 21, 2200 gallons a month, which I can't believe I go through for two people, but that's what the bill says. Now you take that times 440 houses up here, how many thousands of gallons of water are you getting back that you're going, that's going down, going down into the ground? Use that as an incentive 
if you have to give the people in these areas that you want to sewer, hey, we'll knock your water bill down by what, $15 a month, $5 a month, $20 a month. If we're going to get this done, Steve, you've got to incentivize these people out here. Hey, that sounds like a damn good plan to me. Okay, thanks, Joe. You betcha. Okay, Craig, where are we going for next meeting? What's your mind thought? Our next topic. Draft policy. Okay. We might not be ready for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Quinn uh, said that uh, draft policy was on the draft, the tentative plan, but uh, considering that we're, we're probably not to that point yet, um, it definitely was, it was clear we maybe uh, have not shared the information from the earlier meeting that Mike was not part of, because uh, he's a new member. Um, so we maybe can supply him with that questionnaire with all the different concepts of, and Mark, maybe you um, didn't get that either. No, I did. Okay, yeah. Yeah, all right. That was last meeting. Yeah. Okay, all right. Craig, um, both of the meetings are, um, the Zoom recordings are on the city website. Okay, so, so Carrie's saying that we have everything available on the city's website for both Zoom meetings and the information there. Um, we, we probably need to circle back around if you can all think about these concepts and get additional thoughts, questions, as well as the connection side of it. And we circle back around and then connect connections and proposed financing options and go through those again together. And how, how long it would take to do that sewer rate study so that we could reevaluate what those are. We know that as a collective holistic way of looking at this, we're gonna to have to raise the sewer rates for areas that are unsewered as well as sewered. So I think that's gonna be one of the key components that we need to have. Well, again, you, you, you know, cart and horse type of thing until you have an idea of the cost and the approach the committee wants to look at, you know, as a, you know, maybe, you know, it's a great point when we don't get the water back, there's an additional cost to serving water. So if we want to increase the water rates to people that don't have sewer, uh, that type of thing, we need to establish how much, you know, what is that, what does the committee think that should be used for? What's the dollar amount that's going to be? That's how you do a rate study to say, you know, we can't do a rate study before we have some of these variables filled in. Uh, we can't come up and say, oh, it's going to be 25% more until we have the numbers. So I hear you saying that everybody has homework and has to evaluate everything that was talked about today so that the next meeting we can get firm on a process uh, and, and go and look at it that way. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Okay. Last meeting, you charged the committee to look into possible funding, grants, whatever. And I submitted that to your office. Is there still the Clean Water State Evolving Fund available the that clean, the city of Marana used? We use the Clean Water Fund all the time. Um, that's WIFA. That's the Arizona WIFA that I was referring to. Oh. They don't <laughs> offer grants. They offer uh, reduced interest rates on financing. Okay, because in 2019, Marana got a grant. They offer some level of engineering grants, but they're usually relatively small. I don't know how much that one was. 1.5 million. Right, for the city as a whole. Right, it's yeah. a small city, not. Right. Okay. The fee that you're talking about adding, are you looking at putting it in the general operating or would it no. be specifically set aside? That's, yeah, that's kind of the point of it is specifically set aside to offer a pool for whatever. If we, if the committee decides to bring forward, we're one city, this is one system, this is one approach. You know, the lines go in based on the cost from that fee or from general user fees and everybody pays 5,000 to hook up no matter what the, I'm just throwing ideas out there. 
um, you know, whatever the final approach is, we use that to determine what percentage that fee needs to be to accumulate the money necessary to finance the money to make that a possibility. And, and then for you, sir, you said that you had plans to present something at our next meeting, but we're not ready. Are we just riding a stationary bicycle if the plans are already made? No, the, oh, what okay. I mentioned was that to bring draft policy. A draft policy would include the concepts of who, when, and how the connections are going to be, you know, decided, as well as financing options. That's what would be brought in in a draft policy format um, to consider. But we're we aren't far enough along with with these examples or mm -hmm. options yet to even put it into any type of draft policy. Will it be necessary to have a policy that pertains to the city uh, that within our current boundaries and then a separate policy that relates to the county properties that are in question? Or will there be one? I would think to make this work, we need to make it one. The only reason I would see a need to make two policies would be if we wanted to explore a property-based solution, a property tax-based solution, like a GO bond. Um, I mean, that's hard to do um, when you're building infrastructure outside the city. But I would think we want one clear policy that, and again, I agree, no matter how clear the policy, unless you're paying all of it, you're gonna have people not wanting to be part of this or people that are gonna sue us. And you can look across and and I'm sure that our attorney, if we could wake him up back there, could attest that anywhere you've done this in the state, whether it's Sedona implementing a citywide sewer or Lake Havasu implementing a citywide sewer, or even PV, it, you're gonna get you'd, like, you'd like to be heroes, but, it just doesn't happen whenever you mess with sewer, it gets messy. <clears throat> okay, well, I, we're past three o'clock, so I think what everybody should do is probably take this to heart and uh, come back and let's get a firm direction for staff to write a policy on where we want to go finance wise and also funding wise as far as how to finance this. As, as well as the, the connection correct options yes so so the next meeting we'll, we'll go back through this one more time yeah. with the uh, various scenarios that have been presented and then try to get those nailed down yeah and down to so it'll be very much the same mark if you'll be here with your stuff and craig I, that's what we need to do yeah, if, even if we need to ask each individual person what their preference is on those two levels, we need to make sure it's out there and get this thing moving. So that stationary bike doesn't stay parked over there in the corner. Okay. And the 2008 document, it's a public document to have it readily available, easy. We'll send it out to all of you. Okay. So then you can, you know, go back and see what was discussed and considered uh, last time. And um, there's a difference of 100 homes on uh, septic versus our original meeting. How did that happen? Right now, it's all been very basic. We've looked at GIS and did a count of the lots. So that's what we said, it's approximately. Uh -huh. one, one of the things that I think is obvious to all of us is the subdivisions and lots are very few and far between now to build homes on. And I think that has presented a problem with excessive water run from leach fields or septic systems because the more houses that have been built over the last 20 years has been tremendous. Yes, and there, there are very few empty lots, so then every house is introducing their water into that septic system, inundating 
Right. So the whole neighborhood's a septic system. Okay. Or at least a one. <laughs> okay, everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody that's on the phone. Carrie, thank you. Appreciate it. And before we run away, let's kind of get together in our mind when the next meeting and time is. Do have we thought about that? October 20 at 9 30. Now, are we going to do that here? If I can secure the space. Okay. So Sounds good. And you'll let everybody know. We will do a face to face meeting. Okay. Somehow, someway. I like the smiles. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Have a good day and good night. Thank you.